Hey folks, John Thompson, Spring Framework Guru here. So in this section, we're going to take a look at the property hierarchy within Spring. And what I want to point out is we've been looking at property files specifically, but those property values actually can be sourced into Spring several ways. And these do have an order of precedence. And depending on where they're at, is how Spring's going to do it. So you can have a default setting, then you can have an application properties file also, but you can also inject these into the context via an environment variable from the operating system environment, which is going to take precedence over the, the file. So I want to take a look at the, the Spring Boot documentation on the hierarchy and step through that real quickly. Okay, I got the Spring Boot documentation up here, and this list on the screen here, we can see how these uh this hierarchy of properties how they get brought in so now we can bring in from command line arguments that's going to be the the number one so when we start up that that jar or war file if we pass something in on the command line that is going to get taken as precedence and we can see we can also do a, a spring application json object where we pass in a, a json object of properties and we have uh, Jenny we can use. And then number four was system properties where we can get them from the Java system or on number five, operating system environment variables. And then we can see how, how we go down to the property files. One is property files specific to a profile. And in the next section of the course, we're gonna start looking at profiles a lot more in depth. So you have profile specific properties. And then we have application properties both inside and outside your jar. And finally, we can do default properties. So we do have a number of tools here, but it's important to understand this hierarchy of properties. So typically what you're gonna do is deploy an application and you may have like a, a server URL as a property and that could be in your jar file in, in the application.properties file. But if you wanna deploy that jar to a different environment, you can override that either with a command line argument or an operating system environment variable. So this is a, a convenient way of doing that. And that's why Spring has set up this hierarchy like that. So we can take that build artifact, we'll have properties for our test environment, but when we move that into other environments, we can override those easily. So it's very common to have a, a build artifact like a jar file or a war file. And we want to take that, that build artifact from the the build server and move that into different environments. And this is exactly how we're gonna do that. I'm gonna to toggle over to IntelliJ so you can see this actually in action. Okay, so here's one of our uh, first tests uh, setting properties. I'm gonna run this now, verify that it's still running okay. You can see everything's happy, it's looking at those. And what I'm gonna do is in IntelliJ, I'm gonna come up here and go to edit configurations. And what I wanna do is add in an environment variable and remember our, our username was guru.jms.user and let's call him Jimmy now. I can say okay and now when we we run this we can see that it fails because now that property is now being set as Jimmy rather than Ron. So it, we overrode the, the property source because of how the hierarchy works. Now I do want to point out one thing here. If we do the same thing here, the test property source, the way this works, it, this can trip you up pretty easily. The way this works is that when you specify a test property source, it is going to take precedence over everything else, including environment variables. So just a word of caution should you use that. Okay, in this section we actually covered how properties have a hierarchy within Spring and how they can be set and overridden. So in general, definitely refer back to the Spring documentation because this does evolve over time as we're using Spring. They've enhanced this a lot in the last few years as to the options that you have in it. It literally can get confusing because there, there are different options and especially as Spring has evolved, uh, more and more things have come into it. But generally, when you have a properties file set inside the jar and your application is configured to use that, that's going to be one of the lower precedent ones. If you're going to pass in something on the command line or use an operating system environment variable, that will override what is packaged in that. And this is very intentional because if you're in a major enterprise, you are going to be doing some type of continuous integration builds. And those CI builds are going to be tracked for uh, regulatory compliance where we have to prove what 
artifacts we deploy to the different environments. And that artifact will get deployed, but we want different runtime properties be injected into that runtime artifact. So we're not pointing at development servers from production. That would be undesired effect. So just remember that there are hierarchies to the property. That's the one thing I really want to get across in, in this. And in the next section, we're going to be taking a look at profiles and I'm going to show you how these can start working together at using the properties and, and profiles. And it's a very powerful combination for managing spring applications in the enterprise.